up risers today i'm going to be talking to you about superdraft i absolutely love that site i've dominated over there for about 14 months and i'm going to show you how to use the teamriserfall.com superdraft projections how to fine tune your player pool because projections are great but player pools are equally as important on superdraft because of these massive multipliers on top of that i want to talk a little bit about contest selection and how to pick the proper contest to put yourself in a position to win some money now when you look at these contests the beautiful thing about mass multi entering on super draft is you are often able to enter a little bit around two to three percent of all the entries which means if you max enter 150 times in this tournament the red zone tournament you are actually soaking up two percent of all of the entries that means your entries take up two percent of the entire field about 2.2 percent that is phenomenal anytime you can find a tournament on FanDuel or DraftKings you're looking for one percent or higher super draft you get a nice nice baseline of around two percent some of the tournaments you can actually enter about three percent of the entire field just like this one right here the hail mary 87 entries is three percent of the entries which means uh you know 10 people who max enter have taken up 30 percent of the entire field's worth of entries so these are very very nice contest selections and great for mass multi-entering on top of that the payout structure is quite flat compared to some other sites now They've gotten a little bit more top heavy as of late, but that's okay still. When you're looking at a contest like this, currently I am seeing 20% to first place. All right, so 2.5K would be 10%. Multiply that by two, that's 20% to, to first place. On top of that, we end up seeing just about uh, 33, 35% to the top 10 spots. That's okay. That's pretty standard by today's uh, standards, but still, again, we're getting a nice nice payout all the way down to 600th place, which means 20% or more of the field gets paid. Some of these tournaments are a little bit different. Some will show you uh, a tournament payout structure where you can get in there and end up cashing out a little bit higher rate. So this one is about 23% of the field gets paid and first place is just about 18% or so, 16% the first place. So a little bit more to invest, but a little bit flatter payout structure and more people get paid out. Now, how do you go about selecting Selecting your players here. Well, first off, I think it's incredibly important to grab the projections and use someone like Fantasy Cruncher, our partner. So I'm going to highlight and copy the player pool over here on Superdraft. Let me grab these quarterbacks. I'm going to slide over to Fantasy Cruncher. And the reason being, and I'm going to show you here in a hot second, uh, it helps me identify exactly who I want. I'm going to go to Upload Data, Post Their Names. Then I'm going to go back to the study hub. I'm going to grab our rise or fall projections. Post that right into the projection. And if you're an MME player, you're going to change this to use my projections. Very important. Uh, we have already applied the multiplier in your player pool. Now, you will often see stuff like this happen, and you need to embrace it. Players who are not that good or a middle of the road are often the highest projected quarterbacks on super draft. And that is because of the massive multipliers. A guy like Jameis Winston at 1.65 times multiplier is phenomenal. Even though we know Justin Herbert's been going absolutely nuclear this year, uh, statistically fantasy wise, listen, uh, if they both score 10 points this weekend, that means that Jameis Winston's going to get 16.5 points on super draft justin herbert is only going to get 11.5 the more points they score the more drastic that becomes let's say they both score 20 fantasy points this weekend that's their final result that means you're going to get 33 points 20 times 1.65 is 33 fantasy points that's crazy 20 fantasy points by justin herbert is just 23 points. So the, the more points they actually do score, the better the game they have, the greater the range ends up becoming, the discrepancy, I should say, between the scores. This is why targeting those lower uh, talent 
type players who do have an upside. Someone like Jameis Winston we know has an upside. Alex Smith shockingly has an upside right now. I mean, here it is, 1.8 multiplier at 32.4 actual points, 28.8. And we have stack potential with J.D. McKissick. We have stack potential with Logan Thomas and Terry McLaurin. Those are the guys I'm actually looking to target. So the first thing I'm going to do is uncheck my player pool. Again, I think the the way to do this is by using FC. All of our Team Rise or Fall members get $20 to use at FC, which makes this incredibly easy to do so. If you're going to be doing hand builds, I will show you exactly what I do next, but I'm going to focus here first. <clears throat> So I start off by going down this list, and I basically am going to find similar players with similar multipliers, and then I'm simply going to choose the one player that has a higher probability of hitting their potential. That's it. That is it. I go up and down my player pool, and I play probability game. These two, I think, are fairly similar. They're both going to make it. Guy like Tua versus Drew Locke, I think they're both kind of low for hitting their upside. All right, let me go to quarterback position first, actually. Uh, when I'm looking at Cam Newton versus Tua, you know, Tua has a 1.55. Cam Newton has a 1.35. And we know Cam Newton's not really throwing the football too much. Again, these guys end up here at the top of the player pool, but neither of them are really guys I want to target early in the week as I'm doing this tutorial, by the week, by the way. Uh, a 1.6 Drew Locke, who's throwing the ball 40-plus times, that is somebody I want to use. So as long as he's playing, someone like Drew Locke, probably going to be in there over Tua, probably going to be in there over Cam Newton. A guy like Andy Dalton, he has had a terrible, terrible season, but I do think that Andy Dalton's going to have to throw the ball a billion times. And I like Andy Dalton at 1.55. And the one other thing that I want to talk about is... Whom can I stack with him? I like the stacking opportunities with Andy Dalton because you have Dalton Schultz, C.D. Lamb, Michael Gallup, and Amari Cooper. These are types of plays that I think have more upside. Also, if we're looking at the games, how many people can you really stack up in a game like Miami and Denver? Not so many, right? It's going to be like Locke, Judy versus Parker or something like that, or Locke, Judy, and Fant and Parker. The options are a little limited. Someone like Dalton running it back on the other side, you can have Justin Jefferson, Delvin Cook, Adam Thielen all included. We are talking seven or eight potential stack opportunities by targeting a guy like Andy Dalton. So while he's not been that great, I think because of his 1.55 multiplier and the six or seven stack opportunities, you have massive upside if he does hit that potential. Going down a little bit lower. Now I'm comparing guys who are like Philip Rivers and Joe Burrow. They both have a 1.4. Simply going to look at, well, who are they playing this week? And then how has, has their game log looked? Truly, it's a game log type thing on, on Super Draft. All right, well, Phil Rivers has a few big games, but really has been dudding. Like, he will hurt your lineup uh, more than 50% of the time. Go look at Joe Burrow, and it's not that. It's fairly consistent. So while the projections do show that Philip Rivers is slightly better play than Joe Burrow, guess what, my friends? Joe Burrow makes the player pool. Um, Philip Rivers does not because Burrow is going to give me six times, seven times out of nine games, he's going to give me, you know, 25 plus points. He's going to give me multiple touchdowns here and there. Philip Rivers does not have that. And again, we're going to circle back to the other thing I was just talking about. What type of game stack opportunities do I have? Well, with Cincinnati this week, I would have T. Higgins. I would have A.J. Green. I would have Tyler Boyd. I would have the opportunity to run it back with Logan Thomas, Terry McLaurin, J.D. McKissick. Again, massive stacking opportunities. Do I get that out of Philadelphia on a lesser scale with Michael Pittman Jr., Devontae Adams, guys like that, uh, Alan Lazard? whatever. There's some smaller opportunities, sure, but they're not as big as Burrow. So again, this is how I would go. I'd make my pool. It's like usually six to eight quarterbacks, which means some very talented guys sometimes do not make the player pool. Uh, then you got to make your own choices down here, right? You've got a big Ben type opportunity. He's been incredibly consistent. His, his multiplier is 1.2, but the thing is the multiplier projection will stay kind of low, unfortunately. So what you often have to do when you are playing on super draft is you're going to target 
target some of these players and maybe when you realize wow that's actually really interesting big ben's still down here i want him included um so i'm gonna have to take away somebody because again i don't want too many other uh quarterbacks let's take away the volatile drew lock now i didn't like the stack opportunity at all i'm now i'm only looking at players who i think have great stacking opportunities big ben Phenomenal. Three wide receivers, all playing great football. They're all doing well. Big Ben's throwing the ball 42 times or more in three out of the last four games. You know, 49, 32, 42, 46 times. That's upside. That's upside for days. You can stack it, run it back with, you know, uh, DJ Chark, uh, LaVisca Chenault if he's playing, James Robinson at running back, and uh, Keelan Cole. You can plug him in. Lots of stack opportunities. There we go. So whatever, I do that at quarterback. My friends at running back, it's fairly similar. Duke Johnson, what type of upside does he have because of the multiplier? 1.85 is phenomenal. But, my friends, we know he's not going to get there very up, uh, very often. He does not have a ton of upside. And what is the probability of hitting that upside? I think it's fairly low. Duke Johnson, while he might be the highest projected player on Super Draft this week, may not even make my player pool. Same with Giovanni Bernard. Um, I think that, you know, the upside is there, but the potential and probability of hitting it, uh, potentially not there. I'm, I'm not too sure here. I'll probably come back to this. If making me choose between Duke and Geo, it's Geo. Uh, Delvin Cook, a guy like this, 1.05. Listen, I get it, but it, even without a multiplier, all he has to do is score a touchdown or two, uh, which he's done basically every single game but this last one, in which he had 34 touches. Come on, that's an anomaly. 34 touches from Delvin Cook. He's often going to score. They have a 27.25 uh, point implied team total against a, one of the worst defenses in the NFL. Yes, Delvin Cook gets included. Here's one that's like a plug-and-play option to me. If Selvin Ahmad is starting here again and they don't have Miles Gaskins, they don't have Jordan Howard, they don't have Matthew Breda, I have a guy here who had 21 touches last week, 22 touches. And if he's going to be a starting running back at a two times multiplier, my friends, I will likely boost his projection this week to make sure that he is my highest owned running back, even though there are other running backs on this slate that are much more talented. I'm going to jack his projection up because a two times multiply for a guy who's going to get 20 plus touches. Yes. Don't overthink things. DeAndre Swift, 1.4 multiplier versus Miles Sanders, 1.35 multiplier. Sometimes you got to make a stand and pick one of them. Sometimes, my friend, you can just use them both. It ain't that hard. Um, you're going to go up and down your player pool, do the same thing here. Wide receiver, a little bit different. What I will do, and this is the most time-consuming part, is when I'm looking at my quarterback pool, I know these are my five quarterbacks. I would go to these teams first, New Orleans, Washington, Dallas, Cincinnati, and Pittsburgh. So let me do one for example. I'll do Pittsburgh and Jacksonville. I'm going to go to wide receiver. <clears throat> I'm going to go to Pittsburgh and I'm Jacksonville. Here's Jacksonville. I'm going to add the guys who are stack-worthy of game stacks. So I added these three, Shark, Cole, Conley. Pittsburgh, I'm going to add the game stack pieces. It's Deontay Johnson, Juju Smith-Schuster, Chase Claypool. I'm not worried about anything else. I'm not worried about multipliers or nothing. Washington and Cincinnati, that was another one. So Terry McLaurin, uh, potentially the only one. And then tight end probably will add McLaurin, um, Logan Thomas. And I will add J.D. McKissick. At 165. All right. And now I'm going to go back to wide receiver. I'm going to go to Cincinnati. I'm going to add Higgins, Boyd, and Green. I'm not even going to worry about multipliers, projections, nothing. I want them all included for when I do my game stacks because stacking, incredibly important on Super Draft. Think about it this way. If you have a quarterback who throws a touchdown to T. Higgins, you know, if Burrow throws to T. Higgins, you are stacking not only those fantasy points, but you're stacking their multiplier. Stacking is literally the most important thing on, on Super Draft. If you're not stacking, you're going to lose your money every single week, most often. Uh, I'm sure there's some outlier weeks, if not. But the not only do the fantasy points stack up for touchdowns, but the multipliers stack up for touchdowns. Incredibly important. And if you're trying to climb this, right, you're trying to get to the top of these prize pools like Allie Bourne did the other month, 120K, um, stacking 
incredibly important. I think she had a four-man stack. I went back and reviewed it. <laughs> Sorry, Ellie, I was watching. Uh, DJ Dallas, she went in there and like boosted his projections, much like I finished top 10 this past week in this tournament. Doing that as well, I boosted DeAndre Swift's projections, just like I plan on boosting Selvin Ahmed's projections this week and DeAndre Swift's projections. You have to take advantage of the multiplier, and if you want certain players to be in your player pool at a high amount, you have to manually edit some stuff. Once I go through and I add all of my quarterback wide receiver and game stack potential right so again my quarterbacks I'm going to add all Cincinnati and Washington targets Dallas Minnesota targets Saints and Falcon targets Steelers and Jaguars targets and then the football team versus the Bengals targets after that the only thing I'm going to do my friend go through one at a time and I'm going to add in only the guys I want included who have high probabilities of having a good game. I kid you not, that is it. Make a player pool, keep it tight, 60 to 80 players, 50 to 70 players, and it should be a bunch of players who you think has a high probability of going off. If they don't have a high probability of, of scoring well, then don't even include them. Mike Williams at a 1.75 might not even make my player pool because he's very, very volatile. I will take um, Jacoby Myers at 1.65. Over Mike Williams, even though the projection shows that Mike Williams is a better play, my friends, Jacoby Myers has been much more consistent. He's getting more targets. He's at over a 90% snap rate three weeks in a row. So a guy like Jacoby Myers, even though he has a lower projection, gets in there while Mike Williams doesn't. That's what I do with my entire player pool. I finish it off. And uh, I go make my lineups. Now, if you're going to hand build these lineups, it takes a little bit of uh, perfecting. I think it's very difficult to hand build over on Superdraft if you're not following something very specific. Now, uh, here is how I think that you should do it. If you're hand building, the first thing you're going to do is you identify who your quarterback's going to be that week. I'm assuming you're hand building one or, or two or three lineups. All right. You can sort it by the multiplier if you'd like to do it this way and go by there. So maybe I decide Alex Smith is my super draft quarterback. Whatever. All right. The next thing you need to do, much like you do for hand building in baseball, you build your stack first. All right. So now we're going to go up to the top. Where are you, Washington, Cincinnati, Washington? I'm going to grab the few wide receivers that are even worth targeting here. Build a lineup around maybe T. Higgins and Terry McLaurin. Let's game stack it. Tyler Boyd. And then tight end, terrible position. Just going to plug in Logan Thomas. I've got myself a nice five player game stack built right there on Super Draft. And from here, I would plug in whomever my favorite two running backs are, go down to the flex, worry about ceiling only. That's the last spot. Don't worry about this is like your one off hitter in baseball, right? Like <laughs> if you got a ton of money left over, you're worrying about nothing but ceiling. That's where Mike Trout gets plugged in there, even if he's facing a, an ace on the mound. You're like, I don't care. Mike Trout has two home run. Uh, double dung potential in a single game, you're going to plug him in there, all right? Running backs here, you're you're plugging in whomever your two favorite running backs are of the week. Nick Chubb, you know, maybe he's won. Selvin Ahmad, there you go. Flex position, you plug in your favorite final play on the entire slate, totally regardless to what their multiplier is, totally regardless to who they are, who they play are. You're just saying, who do I think is going to go absolutely bonkers? Who has massive upside? All right, Delvin Cook, bang. There you go. Made myself a five-player game stack, focused on nothing but the stack first, and then upside next. My friends, I hope you enjoyed this Super Draft tutorial. It was a little mix of building your lineups here on Fantasy Cruncher, which this stuff is all going to be incredibly important. You know, you're unchecking flex position at tight end. You're adding, you know, some type of global cap. You're adding some randomness. You're going to make some stacks. Quarterback with at least two players, wide receiver, tight end, same team, opposing team, whatever. You guys get it. I'll see you on the inside, my friends. Uh, hope to see you on the inside, I should say. Over a 1,000 members already in Discord through teamriserfall.com. Give it a look. I'll see you on the inside.